Hello and welcome to In Conversation. Now today I'm joined by the founder and co-founder of Christian Friends of Magan David Adam UK and they have many stories and things to say that's going to really interest you so do stay tuned. But I want to welcome you to the program. I have Norman uh, Feingold and Peter McGowan. Thank you. And so we're going to be discussing all the work that you're doing in Israel and around the world. But first, Norman, I was wondering if you could introduce us to the organization. And just for the benefit of those who don't know, tell us about all the work that you do. Well, Magan David Adam, the Red Shield of David, is the ambulance and blood service organization of the state of Israel. It is humanitarian. It is apolitical. It is not involved with racial prejudice. It is not involved with anything other than saving lives and healing. Magan David Adam is a service which serves all the people of Israel, whether they be Arab, whether they be Muslim, whether they be Jew, whether they be Christian, Druze, or whatever. It has no boundaries, it asks no questions, it is purpose is to save life. The first law of Jewish life is the law of pikuach nefesh, the right to survive. And Magin David Adam holds a magnificent flag forward that every human being, regardless, has the right to survive. It is that survival which is the power, the dynamo behind Magin David Adam. Magin David Adam also not only serves the people of Israel and the visitors to Israel, whoever they may be, but it is also involved throughout the world, helping communities in such places as India, in Azerbaijan, in Georgia, in Indonesia, which is the largest Muslim nation in the world, which has no relationship with the state of Israel no diplomatic relationship, and yet, three years ago when I was there with my wife, I was there when a letter of agreement was signed between Indonesia and the State of Israel that we would go to Indonesia and we would help to establish an excellent, worthwhile, valuable ambulance service on par and in line with that which we do in Israel. We're doing it all over the world, and so much so that more and more people are clamoring for the expertise. 84% unique in the world of the people, including myself, that work for Magin David Adam are volunteers. Nobody else can say this. We have youngsters coming from South Africa. We have youngsters coming from Australia, from the United States. We have them from Norway. We have them from Sweden. We have them from the UK. They come year in and year out, learning the tools of the trade, learning what it's like for a child, not a child so much, an 18, 19 year old, to hold his hand out to a sick person, maybe a man of my age, who's maybe even dying heart attack, to hold that hand and give the last words of comfort. That's the act of generosity and an act of love. I'm speaking to a Christian audience. Walking alongside Magin David Adam is walking in the footsteps of Jesus. If Jesus was here today, if the clock could be turned back, if he could unravel the curtains of history, I'm sure that Jesus would say, this is wondrous work, it's the work of the Almighty. This is the work of healing. To heal the sick, to break the bonds of servitude, to break the bonds of need, to encourage life, to hold hands and to share a future to make sure that the living live, and they live with care and consideration, and that love is not an empty word. Love is a word of deed. Christianity and Judaism are words of love. They are words of deeds. They are words of action. It is only by pushing forward, by propelling this action, 
the human being to give to the other human being in our grace after meals it is so clear that we say elohim adam that whatever we do and however we act it should be in the eyes of the almighty but it should be in the eyes of man I just want to stop you there because it's really good uh, things that you were saying. We actually have a clip which will show us in more detail the work that the organisation is doing. So let's have a look at this clip and get a bit more information from this. Shalom. Shalom. I'm delighted to congratulate Mag and David Adom on its 75th anniversary. MDA is truly a world leader from emergency care to mass casualties. Its history has paralleled the history of the State of Israel since 1930. Thank you for your support for this organization, benefiting everyone in Israel, in peacetime or emergencies. Best wishes from the Presidential House in Jerusalem. Day or night, winter or summer, we know only one season, human need. We use the eyes of science, heart of dedication, hand of mercy. When the call comes, we respond. Mug and David Adom was founded in Tel Aviv in June 1930, 75 years ago, as a response to the riots of 1929. The Jewish people realized that they lacked first aid services to protect themselves in the face of emergencies. In abject poverty, a first aid society was set up called Mug and David Adom, the Red Shield of David. Throughout the 1930s and 40s, it was recognized by the Mandate authorities as the Red Cross Society of the country. Volunteers from MDA were there to help new arrivals in the Promised Land. Holocaust survivors and new immigrants, ethnically cleansed from their Arab homelands, could rely on immediate medical attention from Mug and David Adom, as could all citizens. We became the medical service of the Haganah and Magan David Adom was instrumental in building the foundations of the Jewish state. With the establishment of the State of Israel in 1948, MDA members helped set up the Medical Corps of the Israeli Defense Forces. Following the bloody aftermath of the War of Independence, the Friends of Magan David Adom in Great Britain was founded. Anglo Jewry realized that the bloodshed and loss of life were compounded by an acute lack of medical supplies and resources which could be provided by the diaspora. In 1949, the friends of Mug and David Adom in Great Britain made their first donation of seven vehicles to be used as ambulances in Israel. The ambulances were gratefully received. In 1950, the Knesset passed the Mug and David Adom law and recognized us as the sole organization in Israel to carry out the Red Cross functions of the Geneva Convention. Throughout wars, too many to mention here, and terrorist atrocities that continue to the present day, Mug and David Adom has saved tens of thousands of lives. Hello and welcome back to In Conversation. Now, if you've just joined us, we are discussing the work of Christian friends of Mug and David Adom UK. So, Peter, you are the co-founder of the organisation. Why did you think it was important to set up a Christian friends of and what exactly do you do here in the UK? Well as a Christian I'm a born-again evangelical Christian and I look at the teachings of Jesus and uh, Jesus when the four friends bring the paralyzed man to when the four friends bring the paralyzed man to Jesus he sees their faith you know and you know also Jesus taught us about the Good Samaritan how we should come alongside anybody that's in need and we as Christians are so much so lacking in in that thing within the churches of Great Britain and within the Christian life we you know we'll go onto the streets and we'll we'll we'll, we'll preach and that's right to do so but we've also got to do it in word and in deed as the scriptures tell us to so as a born-again Christian I believe that it's it's very important to us to stand with the Jewish people at this time which we're fast approaching. I believe that these ambulances, it's not me that's buying ambulances, it's God that's gave the mandate 
you know, I believe that Norman uh, got a, a message from the Lord. And in that message, he had to reach out to Christians. And I'm just privileged that I, w I was that Christian. And from there, within the first year, we, we achieved 400 Christian families in the UK. Then we got four supporting churches. And from there, it's gone on. And it's going on. And uh, we've got one ambulance based in Cass Saba that was dedicated in 2008. We also have another one in, in Nazareth, which was dedicated in Bolton in 2009. And we've just completed on a bloodmobile, which cost £90,000 and is in Israel working. And as part of Christian Friends of Mag and David Adom, what we do is we are all... Uh, volunteers we all do this because we love the Lord as Christians that's great now Norman Peter talked about building bridges between uh, Christian and Jews how do you feel that the organization is doing that the concept the initial concept it, the vision was that Jews and Christians should heal differences, should forget the iniquities of the past, should come together as brothers and sisters, but in practical terms. At the moment, we're trying to build, not only trying, we're going to succeed in building a station of ambulances in Kiryat Shemona in the north of Israel. It's an area which is so much required. Christians and Jews together are going to glorify. This is the work of the Almighty. We are going to do something. We are going to accomplish. All Christians should be giving towards it. All Christians should be involved in it. All Christians should visit it. The Holy Land is there for them. It's not only there for me. I live in Netanya. I live in Israel, it's glorious. I look through the window, I see the blue Mediterranean, I see the palm trees waving at me and smiling. And I live a life of joy. The Christian world has to come alongside me and they have to equally share this joy in this wondrous issue. Where are we going? We're not only going to build an ambulance station, we're going to heal the differences. We're going to make sure that the Christian hand is stretched out and the Jewish hand is stretched backwards so that they reach together in harmony and in friendship, in love and determination to succeed. Only by giving, only by participating, only by sharing the responsibilities and sharing the tomorrows, the golden tomorrows that should be there for the Jewish people and the Christian people. Judaism, or the Judaic faith, is the giant trunk of our belief. Christianity is that lovely, beautiful golden branch which was grafted on to that trunk. If ever, if ever, the sap of the trunk should not reach that golden branch. Not only will the trunk suffer, but the branch will die. It is this type of action, this type of giving, that every person that I speak to can give 25 pounds, not fortunes maybe, but something towards this ambulance service, something towards saving life. It's a transfusion a transfusion given by people for life. By doing that, we will walk together and the Almighty will put his countenance forward with smiles and he will say, you know, in the Ethics of the Fathers, there's a beautiful quote, who ye tain the nu acherim hasid, he who gives of himself, of this love, of this devotion, of his wherewithal, and causes others to give by his action, is indeed the righteous person of his people. That applies to Jews and Christians. It applies to all that love the Almighty. The Almighty will walk with those that will walk with the Almighty. The Almighty will not walk alone. You have something to offer. You have something to give. That 25 pound, that 50 pound, that 100 pound. Not only from you, from your husband, from your father, from your mother, and even the name of your children. 
You have it to give, you have it to offer, you have it to share. And let the people see as the ambulance rolls by with its emblazoned on its side, emblazoned on its side, contributed, donated by Christian friends that the whole world can see. Not a hidden anonymous gift. But let the world see that the Christians and the Jews are involved in not only building up the state of Israel, but their love and their hearts are involved in the golden tomorrows that the Almighty, I'm sure, has promised us. Peter, I mean, one of the scriptures that underpins the work that you do is faith without works is dead. dead. Well, how can again. you expand on that? Why have you chosen that scripture in particular? Well, because, you know, James is, a, you know, is something that's really spoke to me in the past because we're only here, we're but a vapour on the face of the earth. That's what James says. Here for a little while and then gone. But some, you know, people on this earth, they make great assumptions. They think they're going to be here in 10 years time when really the all that we have is today. We are here, we're a but a mist, a vapour for a little while, then gone. And faith without works is dead because that's, that's, you know, if, you, if I love you, everybody in the room would know because of my actions. And it's the same with, with, with Scripture. The Lord knows that I love the Lord because of my actions, not just to the Jewish people, but throughout, you know, with the things I do in church, the things I do in the community. The Lord knows my heart and its action. Would you agree with that statement? I more than agree with it. I think action, prayer without action, in my opinion, does not have the value of prayer with action. When one gives, one doesn't just give it in the question of money. Money is coming because you need money to acquire, to buy the ambulance or to even replace the ambulance wheel. You need money. But it's the giving of the heart. It's when your arteries are pulsating, when your veins are standing out, when your emotion is crying, and when you want to share your life and your future and your tomorrows, when you want to share the goodness of this earth with kindness, not with hatred, but with this wonderful sharing, this brotherhood, this sisterhood of the Jew and the Christian together. When you do that, it's not empty, empty faith. Then it becomes a vibrant, exhilarating, a tremendous faith. A faith from the heavens, a faith of sharing. God will either frown or smile. The Almighty will walk with us. We should never ask for the Almighty for any boon or any gift unless we are prepared to offer ourselves also in the hands of giving, of giving that boon. Do I believe in what Peter said? Without the gift that comes from us, without that wonderful effort, why should the Almighty smile upon me? You know, I have a favorite quote. Can I talk about my of favorite quote? Of course you quote? can. Yeah. My favorite quote comes from the ethics of the fathers. You know, everything that I dream of may never be fulfilled. Who knows? I'm a man of 86 years of age. I served for six years in the British Navy. I've done all kinds of things in my life. I've been an emissary on behalf of Israel, unpaid as a volunteer in Australia, in New Zealand. I've been all over in Holland, in Belgium, the Channel Islands, you name it, I've been. The act of giving, the act of doing is vital. And now let me talk about my favorite quote. It's in the Ethics of the Fathers. And it reads in Hebrew, Lo alecha ham it simply means you may never live to see the day when every hope that you have, every aspiration that may be contained within your being is fulfilled. 
But it goes on to say that even those hopes may not be fulfilled. Nothing gives you the right to desist from participating in the task. If we do not plant the acorn today, our grandchildren and our great-grandchildren will never rest under the oak's shade. That is the meaning of that beautiful, beautiful word. And that's what life's about. The Almighty demands that we must respond. Christianity and Judaism are not empty vessels. Empty vessels make a lot of noise. It is the giving, it is this contribution, it is the knowing that you, you know, not everybody can be a doctor, not everybody can be a nurse, not everybody can, you think, save a life. But by giving to Mag and David a damn, you can save a life. And it is the act, it's beautiful. It's like looking at a rainbow of colors. It's the gift of God. It's in my hands. I'm sharing it with my Christian brother, who I love. I'm sharing it with my Christian friends. I'm bringing you together as part of a great and magnificent dream. No longer be strangers. Forget the persecutions of the Holocaust. I don't say forget them, but don't let them carry you in with hatred. Forget the Inquisition. Forget the period of the Black Death and the blood libels of our past, which we've gone through. It's time to hold hands. It's time to embrace. It's time to make sure that the Jewish people survive in Israel. May I, even on this little point, let me give you another quote, which I believe is the thing that involves me more than anything else. In the last line of the Hatikva, the national anthem of the Jewish people of the state of Israel, it tells the whole story of what I believe. Liot am chofshi biartzenu biartzion biyerushalayim. To walk as a free people in our own land, God's promise to us. To walk with dignity, with our backs up straight and our heads up high. And to say that I am a human being, I'm a child of God, I'm a child of the Bible. I'm a great, great, great grandson, many times removed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Let me say that with love. Leotam Choshi Biarsenu. Walk with us in freedom. My freedom is Christian freedom. My, cri my freedom is Jewish freedom. We are together. Peter, that was wonderful. Peter, what would you like to say in a few moments to Christians watching? How can they get involved in what you're doing, etc.? Right. Christian Friends of Mag and David Adom started in a war. Imagine that. In 2002, the, the second Le Lebanon war was raging. The rockets were falling on Starot. And it's Kiryat Shemona where we're having this, where we're help, helping to build this medical center. Jews and Christians together are, have come together to do this work. It's, uh, it costs 750,000 pounds to complete. That sounds a lot, doesn't it? But when, when, when I first started, £45,000 seemed a lot for an ambulance. And now there's three Christian ambulances on the road, two from the UK and one from Nigeria. Enoch Adaboy of the Redeemed Christian Church of God gave an ambulance. And this is, this is what the Lord's doing. So if Christians are out there and they would like to get involved, please have a look on our webpage. There's a Mag and David Adon webpage, UK, and click on Christian Friends. You click on there, you will see what we're about. You will see that we're evangelical, born again Christians. Christians, you know, it doesn't matter about the church, the name on the door of the church. We are all Christians together. That's why I like Revelation Television. It's the church without walls. Here we are as Christians. Let's show what we believe by just doing a simple act of giving in faith to God. 
you know, we give to Mag and David Adon, but we're really giving to the Lord. And I've also got an, another web page, and it's uh, anothermancalledpeter.co.uk. If you click on that, you will see all that we've been doing. I've been in New York speaking. I spoke at Times Square Church in June. The Lord's opened doors after door after door. And I'm, I'm, I'm saying, if you're a pastor out there and you, you're thinking that your ministry's uh, a bit weak, why don't you partner with us? And not only that, but the, the people of Israel will know who you are and you'll be, you'll be like a, a beacon to other people to come and join this ma marvellous work. We started, it was only me and Norman in Manchester in, in 2002, that's when we met. And the Lord's really blessed it since. There's hundreds of people, there's actually thousands of people, but there's churches that are involved. So that's a really good way that churches can get involved, as you said, with what you're doing. And as you said, it was about brothers coming together and standing by each other. So if you're watching us and you'd like to find out more information about the organisation, visit www.mda.org. If you go on the website, you'll be able to find much more information and support the work that they're doing. So thank you for watching. God bless and take care.